Hello, this is Cathy Cassidy and here is the last Sunday Book Club before Christmas and I hope you are all okay and not feeling too stressed out. Um, if you do celebrate Christmas, obviously the run up to Christmas is stressful enough as it is without the current situation where we've got rising cases of uh, Covid and everybody panicking and wondering whether they're going to be able to see their loved ones this Christmas and New Year. Um, and whether they can get their booster in time and all of those things. Um, I am just going to carry on as normal, I think, with Sunday Book Club because I strongly believe that books are one of the very best escapes from all that stress. Um, so I'm I'm going to give you a kind of bumper roundup of, of last minute book buys. Um, some for others, maybe some for yourselves as well. There are some of my absolute favourites in, in my little list. I've also had a couple of hellos to say and a question to answer. Um, Priya P left a comment on, um, on the YouTube channel and says, thank you for your brilliant recs. I have currently finished reading the Lost and Found series and was wondering a quick question, who your favourite character from the Lost and Cat Unfound band might be? And she says, mine is probably Lexi or Sammy. And she says, wishing you a Merry Christmas. Priya, I think that my very favourite characters are also Lexi and Sammy. Um, I don't know, Lexi felt like a very personal character to write She's full of emotion, full of feeling. And um, yeah, I really felt engaged when I was writing her character. And Sammy, of course, has been through so much turmoil. And his book meant, meant so much to me because I felt at the time that it was helping, if possible, to raise awareness of the plight of refugees. Um, and I think that's something we still need to do and still need to keep keep pushing our understanding and, and our awareness and reaching out to people who who might... Um, need support, need friendship, which is kind of everybody, especially right now. So yeah, I'm going to say Lexi or Sammy, but I do love all of the band. I'm terrible at picking a favourite character, but yeah, that's what I'm going to go for. A comment from Bean, she says, have a wonderful Christmas. You too, lovely Bean. And uh, Nick Sai says, oh, what a joyful surprise this is. So happy to see Sunday Book Club back again. Can't wait for next week. Well, thank you, Nick. I hope you and your family have a fabulous Christmas too. Lily Lost says, I'm so excited that Sunday Book Club is back. And Gayashri, um, this is just one of my very favourite comments ever. She says, you're the most wholesome person I know. And watching you talk so passionately about books makes my heart smile. Happy holidays. Well, Gayashri, happy holidays to you too. Whatever you celebrate and wherever you are, have a lovely time and thank you for saying I'm wholesome. I don't always feel it, but, you know, you really, really put a huge smile on my face with that comment. Now, what I'm going to do is is kind of rush through some popular. First, my first two picks are two of the most popular books um, this year in the UK. And they're excellent fail safe buys for somebody who likes reading. Um, or, yeah, just if you need a little extra something for somebody. One of them is Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce. It's the story of an old lady and a young lady who go exploring um, in the jungle far away and also long ago. And, yeah, it's a book that took me probably a chapter or two to get into, but so worth it. So, yeah, if you're looking for wholesome, this is totally it. I just loved it. Really, really good all round. If you are a fan of thrillers or detective stories, um, Richard Osman's book, The Thursday Murder Club, has, you know, deservedly been a bestseller for a lot of the year. I know his new book is out in hardback now, but this is still a bargain paperback um, for somebody who hasn't read it yet. Do. Uh, you know, it's it's charming. It's heartwarming. It, there is a great mystery in it, but yeah, it's it's just brilliant in every way. How can somebody be so clever? It's just not really fair, is it, Richard Osman? Um, the next two books, they're kind of a little bit different, a little bit strange. One of one of them, the first is the Vanishing of Audrey Wilde, and it's by Eve Chase. 
what drew me to this was the beautiful cover. I really loved it. But it's a, a mystery, a thriller. Um, it's quite dark. It's quite scary in places. Um, but you do get a, a kind of really, really satisfying answer to, to the mystery at the end of the story. So if you like thrillers, it's a good one or a good one to give to somebody who falls into this category. And then we're going to move on to another paperback, The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. And again, it was the cover that drew, my, drew me to this. I just love these very kind of beautiful old fashioned -y covers that make you feel like you're going to totally escape into the story. And that was the case with this, but it's one of the weirdest books that I've ever read. Um, yeah, I don't even know how to begin to describe this. It's kind of, it's not quite a pastiche, but it's a homage, I suppose, to something else to, um, yeah, I'm not, I can't even say that because it's going to give the story away, really. But it's deep, it's layered, it's complicated, it's confusing. It is also really compelling. Again, one chapter and you are going to be completely hooked. Um, if you like mysteries, if you like dark, esoteric, slightly strange kinds of stories, it's a thick book um, and it will keep you busy and stress-free, I hope or at least someone else's stress is not yours, all the way through the Christmas period. So the betrayals, big thumbs up to that. And my last two books are um, just favourite books, lovely books that have to be mentioned. One of them is a children's picture book, and that's this one. It's called Molly and the Shipwreck. Okay, and it's written by Malachi Doyle and illustrated by Andrew Whitson. And um, the illustrations are absolutely beautiful. It's a lovely story of, well, I'm going to actually read you the blurb on the back because that maybe explains it. It's part of a series about Molly and all of her adventures, but... Um, if I read you the blurb, I think you'll understand why I love this book particularly and why I had to have it. And it's it's going to be one I'm keeping. When out fishing with her dad, Molly hears a cry for help. A woman and her children in a rickety old boat are in danger of capsizing. Helping them ashore and giving them food and shelter for the night, Molly finds out the strangers are seeking a new home in a safe place and she is determined to help them. But will her new friend Amina and her family be allowed to stay on the island? And will Amina's father ever be reunited with his wife and children? So you can see from that little blurb that Molly and the Shipwreck is actually, it's a story about refugees, people looking for safety um, in very trying and difficult times. And it's all done beautifully um, upliftingly and wonderfully for small children. It's the most lovely book that shows kids that, you know, and kids probably, little children don't need to learn this, they probably already know, but we all should reach out a hand and help those in need. Whatever the situation, whatever we can do, we can do something. One of those things where they say, you know, um, if things, if things are difficult, reach out, you know, build a longer table, help people. And Christmas and New Year is really a time for reaching out and including as many people as you can. Even in these strange social distance times, there are ways that you can make that connection and do something for others. And the very last book, the very last book in today's Sunday Book Club is this. Okay, this is the book that I have bought for myself. I actually bought it thinking, oh, this would make a nice present. Um, picked it up. It was actually on sale in the Oxfam shop, but it's a new book. OK, you know, some of the bigger Oxfam shops have have, um, you know, a selection of new items to sell for their charity. But so this book was in there and I thought it would make a nice gift. When I flicked through it, I kind of couldn't just flick. I had to start to read. And then I thought, I know the person that, that needs this book and that person was me. It's called Rewild Your Your Life and it's by S Sarah Sterling. And um, 
just looking for the name of the illustrator because the illustrations are absolutely stunning. And strangely, it's one of those books where the illustrator isn't mentioned until the back, which isn't really fair. Amy Grimes, illustrator. She is awesome because that was the very first thing that drew me to this. To this. Um, it's un underneath the title, it says 52 ways to reconnect to nature. And all the way through the book, there are ideas for reconnecting with nature, ideas for giving some meaning to your life. And also some sort of diary extracts from, from Sarah who who kind of really pulls us in and makes us want to do those things and makes us want to feel as though we're sharing those experiences with her. So if I show you just some of the beautiful artworks in the book, it's literally packed full of gorgeous, gorgeous images that will, will lift your heart. You know, imagine bathing in a waterfall. I've done that, but not for a while. Um, look at this for autumn. Wow. I would buy this for everybody. In fact, if I can get back to that Oxfam shop, I might well pick up a few more copies. But sometimes books like this that say they have lots of ideas for how to do things and how to cheer yourself up, they're a little bit kind of surfacey, a little bit, you know, um, lightweight. This book isn't. It's just beautiful. The ideas are perfectly pitched. They're things that you could do, things that you would want to do, things that you will go out of your way to make happen once you've read this book. So, yeah, big, big thumbs up for Rewild Your Life. And, yeah, I'm just going to finish off by saying a really, really happy Christmas and um, a hopeful, healthy New Year to all of you who celebrate Christmas and New Year right now. And if you don't, then all the good wishes anyway. Um, and if it's not exactly the kind of Christmas or New Year that you had in mind originally, you know, we're just going to make the best of it because that's what we do. Um, I hope you get to see your family. I hope you get to be with your loved ones. I hope you get to feel that there is something to celebrate at this kind of um darkest part of the year here in the UK um, and if you are struggling if the worries about what's going on in the world around you begins to get to you try focusing on the small things um, and and kind of carry on that idea of doing stuff for others feed the birds that's something that's really cheered me up this last few weeks um, we've got several bird feeders and just making sure they're full and that the birds are able to come and feed because that cheers me up maybe make something for a friend it could be a present for christmas or it could just be a an out of nowhere thing it could be something that won't even be finished you know for another couple of months you might knit or crochet or, or stitch or whatever it is bake something who knows Maybe write a letter or a poem or a short story or start a diary for the next year that's ahead. Keep a record of it or paint a picture. It could be anything at all, something that means something to you and something that helps you keep your mind off things, you know, and stay fit as well. You know, do find find an exercise you like, whether it's something like yoga or um, dance or cycling or walking or whatever it happens to be. Try whatever you can to keep yourself smiling through the winter. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to say it again. Happy Christmas. We'll get through this and I will see you in 2022, if not before. Take care. And if all else fails, escape into a book. They will never let you down. Take care.